Question 16 from Paper 1 of the 2022 Higher Physics Examination from the SQA. Light from a laser is incident on a grating as shown. A series of interference maxima are observed on the screen and a student makes the following statements about the interference pattern observed on the screen. And there's three statements here. One, increasing the distance between the grating and the screen will increase the distance between the observed maxima. Increasing the distance between the laser and the grating that will increase the distance between observed maxima. And decreasing the distance between the slits on the grating decreases the distance between the observed maximum. So there's a lot in that question. And to help us with this question, we're going to take you to a simulation to answer the first statement. The first statement is increasing the distance between the grating and the screen increases the distance between the observed maximum. So let's swap over and see what we get for this then. Here's the one we're looking at. And you can see we have the laser. We have the diffraction grating here and we have the screen there. Now these red lines show you how the light is actually diffracted uh, through the grating. Now the first part there asks us if we increase the distance between the grating and the screen, what will happen? Well, if we increase the distance between the screen and the grating, then what happens is if we increase that distance out wide, you can see that definitely the maxima is the distance between the maxima is increasing. I'll take that down to there first of all. And if we go from this position and increase the distance from the diffraction grating to the screen, that's me increasing it now, you can see the maxima are moving further apart. And then that red one out to edge there. So the answer to the first part of our question is going to be, yes, that's going to be true. So the first part is going to be true. So that's going to be correct in there. Increasing the distance between the grating and the screen increases the distance between the observed maxima. Now what about the second one? Increasing the distance between the laser and the grating it increases the distance between the observed maxima. Well, we flick back to our position again, you can see that that's not going to be the case because even though we can't move this laser, we know that it's only light that strikes the diffraction grating that starts to diffract. If you move the laser further away, yes, you'll get a beam of light going towards the diffraction grating, but it won't affect anything on the screen. So for the second statement, it's saying increasing the distance between the actual laser and the grating increases the distance between the observed maxima. Well, we know that's going to be false. That's going to be untrue. So what about the third one then? Decreasing the distance between the slits on the, on the grating increases the distance between the observed maxima. Now what I can do up here is actually look at the equation for the diffraction grating. We have get n lambda, and that's going to equal to d sine theta. And d is going to be equal to the distance between the slits in the grating. So if I rearrange that, I can get sine theta. That's going to give me an idea of how the, the pattern uh, diverges. Sine theta is going to equal to n lambda over d. So it would seem if you decrease the distance between the slits, decrease this D here, you're going to overall increase sine theta, so the, so the pattern should spread out, and therefore uh, the slits on the grating should increase rather than decrease the distance between the observed maxima. So let's swap over and see if that's the case. Now in this, this simulation here we've got the grating as lines per millimetre. And we know if we decrease the value of D, on the actual distance between the actual uh, slits in the grating, what we're doing is we are, we are increasing the lines per millimetre. So if I increase lines per millimetre, I'm really decreasing that small distance D between the slits. Let's see what happens. So if I decrease it, and you can see the interference, the distance between the maxima is definitely getting bigger. Okay. Let's go back to our statement. It says decreasing the distance between the slits on the grating decreases the distance between the observed maxima is actually wrong. So what we're left with then? We're left with just the one statement. That's statement one. And that looks it's going to be just answer A. Question 17 from paper 1 of the 2022 Higher Physics exam from the SQA. Which row in the table shows what happens to the speed, frequency and wavelength of red light as it passes from diamond into air? Well, we have to be very careful here because we're going from diamond to air. We're going from a more dense medium to a less dense medium. And to remind us of what happens, we can take a wee look at the diagram here. 
You can see we're going from diamond to air as the ray of light strikes the normal and it goes from diamond to air. It's going to bend away from the normal. It's going to do the opposite from what we usually think. So we've got to be very careful here. So what happens if the speed of light, speed of the light in a diamond uh, is going to go into air? It's going to increase its speed because it's going from a, a more dense to a less dense medium. So we're looking for the cases where it's going to speed up. So we only have either this one or that one for the speed. Now we do know that when any light moves from any medium, from a more dense to a less dense, or from a less dense to more dense, the frequency will never change. So therefore, it's definitely not that one. So it's got to be that one there. What happens to the wavelength? Well, you can see we've got no other kind of combination here. So the wavelength must increase. And in fact, that's what happens. When you go from diamonds, your wavelengths will be very, very close together like that. But when they go into the air, the wavelengths will increase like that. And we can see this by the little movie uh, we've got here, which will run on the side there. You can see definitely that the speed increases as you go from diamonds or a, med a high density medium to a low density medium. The speed will increase. The frequency will never change. Take a look at the diagram. Frequency does not change. Number of waves passing every second remains the same. But the wavelength will increase from a more dense medium to a less dense medium. The wavelength increases. So our answer to 17 is D. Question 18 from paper 1 of the 2022 Higher Physics exam from the SQA. The output from a signal generator is connected to an oscilloscope. The trace seen on the oscilloscope screen is shown in the diagram. The Y gain setting on the oscilloscope is 2 volts per division, and the time base setting on the oscilloscope is 5 milliseconds per division. I've been asked to find which row in the table gives the correct value for the RMS voltage measured in volts and the frequency measured in hertz. Well, let's start off with, first of all, the RMS voltage. Well, we can take a look at the actual uh, screen and we can see that we have got the RMS voltage. The peak voltage is three boxes up. So the peak voltage is actually three boxes up or three divisions. So that's going to be three divisions up, but we have to multiply that by what's on the scale. And the Y gain is where we get the information about what one square is upwards. It's two volts per division. So it's going to be two volts per division. So we're going to have a V peak of equal to three. The divisions cancel out. The volts is left. Three twos are six volts. So we're going to have a V peak of six volts. But the RMS, the VRMS value for that is equal to the peak voltage, V peak, divided by the square root of 2. So we're going to have 6 volts divided by the square root of 2, and that's going to give us a value of 4.2 volts. So 4.2 volts, if you do that on your calculator. Now what about the frequency? Well, the first thing we have to do is work out the period of the signal. And the period of the signal is counting how many boxes between the start of the wave and the end of the wave. So we've got one complete up and one complete down. That's going to cover one, two, three, four, five, five boxes. So we've got five boxes or five divisions. And we have to multiply that by our time base, which is going to be five milliseconds per division. So five milliseconds per division. And that's going to give us a value for the period, the time taken for one complete cycle. So we do that, we get the period T equals 5 5s or 25. It's going to be 25 milliseconds. And that's going to be equal to 25 times 10 to minus 3 seconds. So that's has got the period T, the time for one complete cycle. But we asked to find the frequency. It's a simple relationship. The frequency is going to be 1 divided by the period. So it's going to be equal to 1 divided by 25 times 10 to the minus 3. And the answer is going to be in hertz. And we work that out, we get a answer of 40. So we're going to have 40 hertz. So which part of the table should we be looking at? The VRMS is 4.2 volts, so it could be this one or that one. And the frequency is going to be 40 hertz. So the answer is going to be B. Question 19 